Hey guys, what's going on? So sometimes I get asked, which apps am I using for my HomeKit setup? Or even better, why are you using other apps? Isn't that kind of the whole point of HomeKit and the Home app? So you can just use one app to control all your HomeKit smart home devices. Well, I do actually have a few apps that I like to keep in my, so let's say, HomeKit toolbox. So today I'm gonna share with you my top five apps that I am currently using uh, for HomeKit to help me get the most out of HomeKit and stick around because there are a few honorable mentions that I've included at the end that might be just what you need to take your HomeKit setup to the next level. Let's go. Sponsored by Trend Micro. Yo, what's up guys? Thanks so much for joining me today. If this is your first time here, welcome. My name is Shane and this channel is all about building an easy smart home using Apple's HomeKit with new videos released every Sunday. So if that's something you're into, be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell because we're doing some cool stuff with HomeKit every week right here. So yeah, Apple's native home app is great uh, for the most part. You know, the design is fantastic. I can manage all of my accessories easily, create automations, you know, all that good stuff. Uh, it's just a great user interface. But HomeKit as a framework is actually much more than just the Home app. For example, many HomeKit accessories will actually expose certain attributes to HomeKit that the Home app doesn't even show you. So it's good to have a few of these third-party HomeKit apps in your toolbox as you are building and growing your smart home. Now it is worth mentioning all the apps that I tell you about today do cost something on the App Store, except for one. There's one free app I'm gonna tell you about. The rest of them do cost something, but I do think that they are worth the fee. Just my personal opinion, but something I do wanna point out. I'll put links to all of the apps that we talk about down below so you can check them out and check out the prices and things like that. As always, chapters will be available down below in case you wanna skip around to any specific parts of this video. Okay, so the first one on my list today is Controller for HomeKit. Now, this one has been around for a while, but I've actually only recently started using it myself. Uh, it's actually a very robust app that's available on the iPhone, iPad, Apple Watch, and Mac, including the new M1 Max. Controller adds a lot of advanced functionality to HomeKit, including you know, the ability to create advanced automations, create backups with the ability to restore your HomeKit home, which is something hopefully none of us ever have to do. And there's even a logging feature that'll display in plain text everything that your HomeKit accessories are doing, although the app must be up and running in the foreground of your device for this feature to work, so that's something to keep in mind. All in all, this app has some fantastic advanced features, and I'm, like I said, still new to this one. I'm still exploring everything that this app can do myself, but I do love having the ability to control and manage my HomeKit setup on my new MacBook Pro. Uh, so that's something I've been really enjoying and kind of using more lately since I got that new M1 MacBook. Now, speaking of my new MacBook, let me go ahead and take a second and tell you about today's sponsor, Trend Micro. I've been using their premium security suite to protect my devices against malware, viruses, ransomware, and other threats. And yes, I did also install this on my new MacBook Pro. It also turns any public hotspot into a secure Wi-Fi connection with a VPN and you get access to other awesome tools like identity theft protection, parental controls, and even 24 seven emergency assistance. You can use this for up to 10 devices, which is great for all the teleworking and virtual learning from home that many of us have been doing lately. I've included a link and a discount code for 10% off your purchase of that premium security suite down below. Okay, and the next app on my list is my favorite free third-party HomeKit app. This is the only free one that I'm gonna talk about today, and that is the Eve app. Eve actually makes a lot of HomeKit products, but even if you don't have any of the Eve products, the Eve app can be a great app for your toolbox. All your HomeKit accessories show up in the Eve app. You can create scenes and automations, and one of the big benefits of the Eve app is that you can create conditional automations, which is something that you can't do in the native Home app for the most part. Automations are called rules in the Eve app and consist of a trigger, conditions, and scenes. You can do things like create temperature automations, 
Again, something else that you cannot do in the native home app for some reason. Certain accessories will show you additional attributes, graphs, and data that you also don't see in the home app. Another really cool thing about the Eve app is lately the ability to see what's going on with your thread devices. And I did a video recently on thread that I'll you know link below or somewhere up here if you want more information on that. But with the Eve app, you can actually see all of the devices in your thread network and how they're connecting and performing within your HomeKit setup, which otherwise is all information and stuff that just kind of goes on in the background behind the scenes that you wouldn't be able to see normally. So again, really cool stuff. I do recommend anyone that's maybe just getting started or kind of new, go ahead and get the Eve app because again, it's the one free one on the list and start tinkering around with some of those more advanced conditional automations. And next on the list is the Home Plus app. I've been using the Home Plus app for quite a while. It's currently called the Home Plus 5 app, I believe, in the App Store. It's pretty similar to the Eve app in that it gives you the ability to create more complex automations, you know, conditional automations and things like that. It also has a great layout and the ability to add lots of cool custom icons. You can create folders for your automations and even name and search your automations. Again, something that you can't do in the native home app. These are great features to have once you start getting more and more automations, you know, and with their recent update, you can even create backups of your HomeKit home containing all your accessories, rooms, zones, scenes, automations, all that stuff, kind of similar to that controller app that we talked about in the beginning. One thing I always do when I set up a new accessory in HomeKit is I'll actually open up the Home Plus app and check to see what attributes are exposed to HomeKit. You'd be surprised at how many HomeKit products actually expose custom attributes to HomeKit that you can often utilize in scenes and automations that you cannot even access in the native home app. Next up on the list is the Home Pass app. I love this one. It's a super simple app that actually stores all of your HomeKit codes and accessory information. This one is great because you never want to be in a place where you have to maybe remove and then re-add some of your HomeKit accessories and maybe you've thrown away or lost the HomeKit code. Maybe you move to a different house or something and you don't have those HomeKit codes available. It also works on the Apple Watch, which can be really nice when you're adding HomeKit accessories and you need to pull up those HomeKit codes quickly. And a quick little pro tip here, if you actually, when you're setting up a new HomeKit device, remember the Eve app I told you about before? When you're setting up a new HomeKit device, if you actually use the Eve app to set up that HomeKit device, uh, when you get a new HomeKit device, there's an option in the setup process to add that device to HomePass if you have HomePass installed on your phone. So this is great, that way you set up a new device, you know, maybe you get a new smart plug or something, you use the Eve app to add it to HomeKit, and then you'll get that option to add it to HomePass, that way you won't forget to do it. You can just go ahead right there, automatically add that code to your HomePass app and store that in there in case you ever need it down the road. And finally, number five is an app I actually talked about recently on one of my videos, and that is the Signals app. This app allows you to flash any of your HomeKit lights throughout your house. It's great for communicating with people in your house for like dinner time or really for any other number of things. You can even create signals that flash different lights with different effects throughout the house and then set those lights to a different color or whatever. And the app also supports Siri shortcuts, which is a nice touch. Touch. Okay, now for some honorable mentions. Now, these apps are apps that I don't use as much, but are great apps nonetheless, and I and might be perfect for you and your needs. So some apps that I wanted to point out because I know, uh, again, they're great apps. And the first one is Follow the Sun. This app is actually made by Matt Corey, the same developer of that Signals app we just talked about. Follow the Sun allows any of your HomeKit lights to transition brightness and temperatures throughout the day based on the time. It allows for lots of customization and perfect for anyone who's really serious about their lighting. Now this app does work best on a Mac that runs all the time, so that is something to keep in mind there. Okay, now I am not one that uses my Apple Watch too much to control my smart home, but if that is something you're into, definitely check out the Home Run app. This one gives you a great way to easily access your HomeKit scenes on your Apple Watch. 
And another good app is actually the Home Cam app, actually made by Aaron Pierce, the same developer of the previously mentioned Home Pass and Home Run app. So this guy's making some awesome apps for HomeKit. So kudos to him and all of the other app developers that are making these great apps that we're you know, discussing here today. Uh, you know, their work is much appreciated by all of us I know in the HomeKit community. So basically with HomeCam, if you're looking for a way to view live feeds of all your home kit cameras on the same screen at the same time then the home cam app is for you one thing i love about the home cam app is this one actually is available on the apple tv so you can get that live feed of multiple cameras all at once on your tv now this is actually live feeds not those little snapshots that happen every number of seconds that you normally would get when you're kind of viewing those uh, home kit feeds without actually opening up the feed you know in the home app or, or something like that and yet another great app made by aaron pierce is a new one called the home paper app now i wanted to point this one out this is really cool this one is very new but you can uh, use this to create beautiful gradients and kind of customize wallpapers for the background of your home app so all the different rooms and stuff you can create your own uh, backgrounds really easily using this app very simple app but it's great works really well uh, so go check that out and last but not least is the push cuts app now push cuts might be the most powerful app on the list uh, in the app store it's defined as a way to create fine-tuned interactions for home kit shortcuts and custom workflows through smart notifications combined with powerful automation actions now you can even use push cuts on a dedicated iOS device as a personal shortcuts and HomeKit server, which is really pretty cool. Again, this is not gonna be for everybody. This is definitely your more advanced stuff, but I did cover this automation server briefly uh, a while back in one of my other videos, which I'll also put a link below for that. But really, if you've gotten deep into HomeKit and shortcuts, then this is one that you definitely wanna try out and start exploring. Now, I've only scratched the surface myself with push cuts, but I know this one is really powerful and this is definitely on my to-do list to start exploring and really try to take HomeKit and my shortcuts to that next level. So HomeKit is actually a very powerful platform and you can use the apps mentioned here today to really tap into its full potential. Let me know in the comments below if you use any of the apps mentioned here and what you like to use them for. And if there's any that you like to use that I didn't mention, please share down below so we can give them a try. I hope this video helped and gave you some potential new tools to put in your HomeKit toolbox. Do me a favor and hit that like button if you got something out of this video. Subscribe if you haven't already for new HomeKit videos published every Sunday right here. And hit that join button below for more information on becoming a channel member. You can get early access to new videos, uh, behind the scenes, and even access to our members only Discord community where we're constantly talking about HomeKit and helping each other out as we're all building our smart homes together. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. And until next time, we'll see y'all later.